Hey kids, Mr. Stanley here. I'm so excited that you have joined me for Children's Church today. We're going to get started the way we always get started with a time of prayer requests and praises. So in just a second, I'm going to have you say a couple of things out loud. First, I want you to think about your last week. Think about things that made you really happy and really excited. I'm going to get you to say those things aloud in a minute. We're going to tell God thank you for those things. Now, if you know someone in your life who is sick or sad or hurting, I'm going to get you to say their names out loud in a minute. We're going to ask God to be with those people and take care of those people. And if you're struggling with anything in your life, if there's anything in your life making you sad or scared or anxious, in a second, I'm going to get you to say those things out loud. We're going to pray that God will help you with those things. So right now, I want to encourage you to do those things, those things we talked about. I'm going to give you 10 to 15 seconds of silence, and I want you to name those things out loud. And then we're going to open with prayer. So start that now. All right, great job, kids. I couldn't hear what you said, but God heard each and everything that you mentioned. So let's open with prayer. Let's put our hands together, bow our heads, and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. I thank you for each and every person that is watching Children's Church today, God. We want to tell you thank you for the many things you've given us in our lives that make us happy or excited. Thank you for blessing us this week. For those people in our lives who are sick or sad or hurting, God, we pray that you would be with them, that you would help them, that you would wrap your big arms around them and let them know that you are with them and you love them, God. And we pray that you would heal them if they're sick. And God, I pray for each and every person that's watching that might be struggling with something in their own lives, God, something making them scared or anxious or sad. I pray that you'd be with each and every one of them. I pray you would help them to focus on you, and I pray that you would walk with them and help them through those things, God. God, I pray that you'd be with us now as we go through Children's Church. Help us to have a lot of fun and learn a lot about you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Great job, kids. All right, we did our opening prayer, and now we move on to another prayer. We pray two times in a row every week to start Children's Church. Who knows what this next prayer is called? It has a special name. What's it called? All right, yes, it's called the Lord's Prayer. And guys, this is a special prayer we pray every week because when Jesus was here on earth, his disciples, his best friends, one day they asked him, Jesus, how should we pray? Will you teach us to pray? And Jesus taught them to pray using this prayer that we now call the Lord's Prayer. And we pray it every single Sunday. Whether you're in children's church or the gathering or traditional worship, we pray this prayer together. So we're going to pray that now. If you know it, it starts our Father. If you don't know it, just listen this morning. And just listen, and as you come to children's church more and more, you're going to hear this prayer. You're going to memorize it. Almost everyone that comes to Children's Church, traditional worship or the gathering, has this memorized because we do it over and over and over. So if you know it, pray along with me. If not, just listen. Again, it starts. Our Father. Let's put our hands together. Bow our heads. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Great job, kids. All right, now we move on to our Bible story or our Bible lesson for the day. And if you've been with us the last two weeks, we've started telling the stories of Jesus. And many of these you have heard, but we've been telling the stories of how Jesus taught people about God, how Jesus healed people, how Jesus did miracles, how Jesus told parables. We've been telling these great big stories of Jesus that we find in the New Testament. All right. And last week, if you were with us, we talked about how Jesus calmed the storm. And it was a really cool story. If you haven't heard it, go back and look at last week's video. But the story this week is kind of similar to that story with one big difference. But a lot of parts of the story are kind of the same. All right, you ready? Here we go. So Jesus and his disciples had been teaching in a city. 
And they had been teaching people about God. They had been healing people. They had, Jesus had been telling people stories. And he had worked all day there in that city teaching people these things and healing people and helping people, all right? And at the end of the day, he decides he wants to be in another city the next day. But that other city is across a big body of water. See, it's very similar to last week's story. But in last week's story, Jesus got in the boat and went with the disciples. In this week's story, Jesus tells the disciples, go ahead and go to the next city. Go ahead and sail to the next city. I'll catch up with you. All right? And the disciples are like, well, how's he going to catch up with us? Well, he's got to go across and we've got the boat. But they're like, we, we trust you, Jesus. You're the son of God. So we're going to do it. So the disciples get in the boat and they start sailing across. And the Bible says that Jesus went up on a mountain. And spent time praying with God. All right? And the Bible says that the disciples are going across this body of water. When they're in the middle of the body of water, what do you think happens? Happens every time someone seems to get on a boat in the Bible, something comes. Right? A giant storm comes. All right? This one probably wasn't as big as the one we talked about last week, but a storm comes as the disciples are in the middle of this body of water. And they're scared. Because there's wind, and there's rain, and there's waves, and there's probably thunder and lightning. It is pretty scary, and they're doing all the things that they know to do to keep their boat from flipping over, to keep their boat from sinking. So they're working really hard, and they're a little bit scared in the middle of this water. And as they're doing those things, all of a sudden, they notice something that makes them even more scared. In the middle of the storm, they're looking out, and they see someone walking on the water. Someone's walking on the water in the middle of the storm. Can any of us walk on water? I can't walk on water. I don't think any of you can walk on water. No one we know can walk on water. But the disciples see a person walking on the water and they can't imagine how that's possible. So the only thing they can think of, it's got to be a ghost. They say, it's a ghost! There's a ghost! And this makes them even more scared. All right? And then the ghost starts talking to them, which makes it even a little bit more scary. But the ghost says, don't be afraid. It's me, Jesus. And the disciples are still a little bit, they don't know if they believe it. Because again, they know Jesus, they've seen him do things, but nobody can walk on water. And so Peter, one of the lead disciples, he's kind of the leader of the disciples. He says, Jesus, if that's really you, Tell me to climb out of the boat and walk on water with you. Right? And Jesus says, come. He's telling Peter, get out of the boat and walk to me. And so Peter, he takes a step out of the boat. You can imagine he's like testing it out, making sure his foot won't sink. But when he gets out of the boat, he can walk on water. Just like it's solid ground. And he begins to walk towards Jesus. And he's looking at Jesus and he's walking towards Jesus. Even though, remember, crazy scary stuff is going on all around him. There's wind, there's waves, there's thunder, there's lightning. But he's walking towards Jesus as he's looking at Jesus. But the Bible says about halfway to Jesus, he takes his eyes off of Jesus. And he begins to look at those things. The wind, the waves, the thunder, the lightning. And when he takes his eyes off Jesus and he looks at those things, he begins to sink in the water. And as he's sinking in the water, he says, Jesus, help me. And he pulls it, puts his arm out to Jesus. And Jesus walks over to him, grabs his arm, pulls him out of that water. And they both walk to the boat, get on the boat. And as soon as they're on the boat, the wind goes away, the rain goes away, the waves go away, the thunder goes away, and the lightning goes away, and everything is calm. And the disciples say, surely this is the Son of God. Good story? Guys, I love that story. It's similar to last week's story, but I think I like this story even better than last week's story because of what happens with Peter and Jesus on the water. All right, so here's what I want you to think about this week. I want you to think about Peter, okay? When Peter was walking on the water, if he looked at Jesus, he was fine. He could walk on the water, even though scary stuff was going on all around him. If he looked at Jesus, if he focused on Jesus, he could walk on water. But when he looked away from Jesus and began to focus on all those scary things around him, what happened to him? 
he began to sink. All right? Guys, we're going to have times in our lives when things happen. Random things, weird things happen that cause us to be sad, that cause us to be worried, cause us to be anxious, cause us to be angry. We're going to have things in our lives happen that causes us to feel all of those things, right? And guys, when those things happen, I want to encourage you to be like Peter at the beginning of walking on the water. I want to encourage you to focus on Jesus so that even though you've got all these things going around you, you're focusing on Jesus and Jesus can help you through those things. Jesus promises to help us through those things. And we talked about last week, that's how this story is similar too, to focus on Jesus when times are hard, when we're feeling all those things. Ways that we can focus on Jesus is by praying to Jesus, by talking to Jesus during those times, by reading our Bibles during those times. Miss Stephanie said in Children's Church last week, we can sing or listen to Christian music that reminds us that Jesus loves us and that Jesus helps us during the hard times. And we also said that you can talk to the people that God has blessed you with in your lives, your parents, your teachers, me, Miss Stephanie. You can talk to us. Tell us those things you're feeling so that we can help you with those things as well. So guys, when times are like that, when things happen that cause you to be scared, sad, anxious, overwhelmed, I want to encourage you to be like Peter and focus on Jesus. Can you remember that for me? All right. But guys, you are going to have times. You're going to have times where it's too hard to do that. Right? You're going to have times in your life when it's so overwhelming, something so sad has happened, something has made you overwhelmed or angry or really sad or really worried, and you forget to do those things. And guys, you feel like you begin, you begin to sink. It becomes so overwhelming. And when those times come, guys, I want you to try and be like Peter too. Because remember when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink in the water. And what did he yell to Jesus? You remember? He said, Jesus, help me. And guys, when you start feeling like you're sinking, when life becomes so overwhelming, you feel like you're drowning, you feel like you're sinking, I want to encourage you to do the same. Pray. And if the prayer is as simple as Jesus, help me, I want to encourage you to pray that. All right? And guys, I promise you, if we call out to Jesus, Jesus will help us. Jesus may not take away that thing that's causing us to be sad or overwhelmed or angry or worried, but Jesus promises he will be right there beside us. He'll give us strength to get through those times. He'll walk with us through those times, and he'll help us through those times. So you can remember that for me? If you can remember that for me, give me two big thumbs up. Guys, thank you for coming to Children's Church today. I had so much fun. Come back next week. We're going to do another really cool story about Jesus. All right, so let's close in prayer, and we'll be done. Put your hands together. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this story of Jesus and Peter walking on water. We thank you for what it teaches us, God. And we pray that the next time in our lives we have something really sad happen, or something that causes us to be overwhelmed or angry or worried or anxious. We pray that you would help us to keep our focus on you by praying to you, reading our Bible, talking to people, or listening to Christian music or singing Christian music, God. But God, when our lives get so crazy that we feel like we're drowning, we feel like we're sinking. If it gets to that point, help us to simply say, Jesus, save me. And God, we thank you that in those times we know you're with us. And you will help us and you will give us strength and wisdom and you'll walk with us through those hard times. Help us to remember that today. God, I pray for each and every kid that has come to Children's Church today. I pray that you would be with them this week. Bless them. Walk with them through this week. Lead them and guide them. We love you, God. We thank you for this day. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. See you guys. I'll see you next week.